Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we'll take a look into what is Thymlib. Well, Thymlib is a modern server-side Java template engine for both web and standalone environments capable of processing HTML, XML, JavaScript, CSS, and even plain text. Well, Thymlib is not only used in a web applications, but also used in standalone applications. And Thymlib is not only capable of processing HTML, but Thymlib can be also used to processing XML, JavaScript, CSS, and even plain text. And in this course, we are going to use Thymlib to process HTML templates. Well, the main goal of Thymlib is to provide an elegant and high maintainable way of creating templates. Well, Thymlib is commonly used to generate HTML views for our web applications. Well, consider this is a Spring WebMUC application architecture over here. And Thymlib is widely used to develop the HTML views in a web applications. And this is the example of Spring MUC web application architecture. And in Spring Web MUC applications, basically Thymlib is used to develop the HTML views. Thymlib is a best choice for developing Spring MUC web applications. Well, we can also use JSP, but JSP is kind of outdated. So nowadays, Thymlib is a best choice for developing Spring MUC applications. And in this course, we are going to use Thymlib templates to develop the view layer in a Spring MUC web applications. Well, you may have a question like what kind of templates can Thymlib process? Well, out of the box, Thymlib allows you to process six kinds of templates such as HTML, XML, text, JavaScript, CSS, and plain text. Well, Thymlib is not only used to process HTML templates, but Thymlib can be used to process XML, text, JavaScript, CSS, and plain text. All right. Well, you might be have a question like what exactly is a Thymlib template? Well, Thymlib template can be HTML, XML, JavaScript, CSS, or plain text. And here, if you can see the code snippet over here, this is the Thymlib HTML template with some HTML code and Thymlib expressions. Okay. So if you can look at this code snippet over here, this is the Thymlib HTML template and it has a HTML code as well as Thymlib expressions and Thymlib attributes. And Thymlib engine will basically process the Thymlib expressions and Thymlib attributes and it will add the result in the HTML page. Okay. So this is how the Thymlib HTML template looks like. Well, consider one more example for Thymlib template. So this is the Thymlib HTML template. It has a HTML code along with that Thymlib expressions and Thymlib attributes. Well, if you can notice here, dollar within a curly braces employees. So employees is a Java variable and we can use Thymlib expression to access the Java variable and here th colon each and th colon text. So these are the Thymlib attributes. Okay. So this is the best example for Thymlib HTML template. It has a HTML code along with that Thymlib expressions and Thymlib attributes. Next, you may have a question like where Thymlib template get processed. Well, in web applications, Thymlib is processed on the server side and the results are included in the HTML and returned to the browser. For example, consider we have Spring MUC web application architecture over here. In Spring MUC, we have model, view and controller. And the view layer in a Spring MUC is responsible to process the Thymlib template at a server side and it will produce that plain HTML output and it will return that plain HTML output to the browser for rendering. Just remember Thymlib templates are get processed at the server side and the results are included in the HTML and returned to the browser for rendering. Well, consider this is a Spring Boot Web MUC architecture and in this architecture we have different layers like view layer, controller layer, service layer and repository layer. And we are going to use Thymlib templates to develop the view layer in a Spring Boot WebMUC applications. All right. And Thymlib is one of the best choice for developing Spring MUC web applications. In next lecture, we'll see how Thymlib template engine works. All right. I will see you in the next lecture.